Hello, my name is Tommaso Pollio, music producer for the Spirit in Action YouTube channel. With me is the futuristic half of the Spirit in Action team, writer and counsellor Claire. Welcome, Claire. Welcome, Tommaso. <laughs> These podcasts are companions to the daily meditations that we produce freely on YouTube. The aim of these discussions is to further clarify what was read out. Today, we talk further on day 12, seeing a good future. You speak of redesigning our relationships and our lives and how we need to see success, uh, the need to be flexible and finding ways to overcome obstacles, I guess is paramount though. Often people can see the success, but have a very blinkered view. Well, by redesigning your relationship with yourself and with life, it really gives you the opportunity to open up to allowing new experiences into your life and to do things differently. And we can change and grow and learn through effort. And if we believe we're capable of growth, you're more likely to succeed. So see failures as learning experiences and just stepping stones to your change. Doing what you love and being passionate about it helps. And of course, really hard work. They're all potential steps towards acknowledging a purposeful life. And they help you to overcome obstacles and choosing to act according to your values, to be positive, to make things happen and develop good habits, basically. Take action to create the results you want. Be willing to become become better. I guess, Claire, it's hard to stop negative thoughts. And with me, they can quickly spiral downwards if one, if I'm not vigilant. Throughout the day, even if I'm making the effort of seeing a positive future, the negativity can easily slot in and change my focus. It usually starts with a feeling and then the negative thought comes and then back, I'm back into the shit. What can we do to assist to change this energy? Well, basically when we're being negative, it's because of your own self-talk. It's basically working against you. We have a tendency to drift back into old repetitive thoughts that have basically created deep grooves in your brain. And it is your subconscious mind where your limiting beliefs live. So often we just start ruminating on negative thoughts, which are often toxic, very toxic. Yes. Uh, yeah. So make your self-talk work for you as it changes your energy. Acknowledge thoughts that weigh you down and don't serve any purpose. Basically, they just keep you stuck. So you mentioned in the talk that we must see what we do, yes. our patterns. You've got to talk to yourself. It's important. Acknowledge what you're thinking and feeling. Catch your inner negative critic. I'll say that again. Catch your inner negative critic. Mm -hmm. Reframe your thinking and focus on progress as if it's there at the time now. And make a choice to constantly stop. Constantly making a choice. To doesn't stop mean what you're going to feel good all the time, but you're constantly making a choice. Right. Make the choice to stop. Yeah to stop what we're doing and you can't see what you do until you can't stop what you do unless you learn to see what you do ah and to learn to be aware meditation all that stuff all these tools are there to to open up your awareness well seeing what you do becomes we become aware of our patterns and behaviors mm. and make a, a choice to learn to stop what we do so if it's not working for us don't do it anymore become aware of your own negativity and negative self-talk constantly make a choice to change those things yes what if we're around or surrounded by energy vampires or, or basically negative people sometimes we're related to them and we're not necessarily able to remove ourselves from this situation from them okay first of all a lot of people aren't intentionally negative. They don't oh, even no. see what they do. They're just, yeah, unaware. So negative people, though, do feed off your energy. 
and they leave you exhausted. And sometimes it can be cause chronic stress for you and can literally suck you dry. Yes. Of your energy. So you yeah. must look out for your own well-being. So the number one thing to do is set boundaries. Boundaries, yes. It's important to have set beginnings and endings. Do you know what I mean by that? No. So you can come at this time and you have to leave at this time. I get it. Things like that. What if you're living with them? <laughs> Well, even that, you can set your boundaries, even in your living with them. Right. Don't bear your soul to protect yourself. Don't give them energy by being unresponsive. Set limits and don't just sit there and take it. Don't overreact. Losing it can make a negative person do the same and make you feel worse and, and often guilty. Yeah. Energy vampires can be angry and, and very manipulative and will fight for control. Thought in and of itself can be your own worst energy vampire. Thoughts in and of themselves can be your own worst enemy vampire. Right. We and can only change our own behaviours and attitudes. So when dealing with negative people... Be in your center. Learn to say no and set boundaries and remind yourself that you are strong, resilient and competent. Another thing that you mentioned that has always stuck with me and that has made my life so much better is we don't have to know what our job or career will be. We just have to see our future as positive. And when our thoughts are in the right place, our future will come towards us. That's the universal law. I mean, that's, that really um, blew my mind away and it really, I think it really created a sense of peace within me and trust. I think it also created a big trust. Well, you know, I believe when our thoughts are aligned and centred, our scent and flavour literally is not only starts to be attracted towards you, but it comes to you. It may start to show its face in subtle, quiet ways. And even, for example, let's just say an example, a relationship. You may attract a relationship and think, oh, you know, I've got this one. But maybe it's the wrong one, but it's showing that energy is coming towards you now and will eventually bring the right one. So it's not right or wrong. Ah, it's like a stepping stone? Yeah. I get that, yes. So it shows its face to you. And you're learning and you're growing. Absolutely. It can still be quite challenging, couldn't it? I mean, often we make a breakthrough... And then something disappointing happens and it tries to knock you down. And then you have to get your... Well, why does this happen? I mean, you know, it's, it seems like... Do you find that with life that you, it's always two steps forward and one steps back? And sometimes people take the one step back. Well, often disappointments happen. But basically as a seed of opportunity, perhaps it makes us view something differently to learn and grow from it, to overcome past difficulties, because all things pass. All things pass. But when you're in the shit, it's hard to... It's hard to see it, absolutely. Yeah, you just think this is yeah. it. So negative emotions makes us less inclined to think of a positive future, which can lead then to depression and ill health. Is it ever too late to turn to positiveness? Is that a word? <laughs> and how can we instill a feeling of purpose in our lives? Well, it's never, ever too late to reframe your life to a more positive one. And finding one's purpose is actually a... a An ongoing thing. Well, it's a tool for a healthier, happier life. Mm. And one of the best ways is by helping others. Helping others will end up helping you find your purpose. 
and helping others without conditions. Yes. You know, look at what you like in life and explore new activities. These will start to show their face. Look at what talents, skills and passions you have. And most importantly, be true to yourself. All these are a gauge towards finding your purpose. Another wonderful thing you mention is people and events may set the stage for your emotions, but they can't dictate them. Remember, we create our own feelings and make our own decisions. It's quite powerful. I mean, I find that powerful. <laughs> this whole talk I find quite powerful. Yeah, um, I quite like me. Well, basically, your past history sets your life, it sets the stage for your emotions. But you can make the choice to choose to change what you do and how you think, which will eventually help to change how you feel. Yeah, so I guess someone like Nelson Mandela, so much, you know, so many horrible things happened to him, but he still came out with but love in his heart. Without resentment. Without resentment. Exactly. So I guess that point of people can't dictate, you know, they may set the stage. For example, they jailed him, but they still couldn't dictate how he, his emotions felt, did he? He still... Yeah, that's right. So I guess he's the greatest example of creating your own feelings and make your own decisions to rise yeah. above. But you can't do that unless you look and see what you do and learn how to stop doing it. Right. And making a choice to do something differently. Which leads into the next question. We have to stop blaming others for the way we feel. This is another wonderful piece of wisdom that has changed my life for the better. This literally has changed my life. Well, basically, stopping blaming others for the way we feel is choosing to be responsible for yourself, emotionally, mentally and physically. It's part of growing up. It's a, a road towards maturity. Is it also accepting when things do happen to you that are not nice that taking responsibility and going, well... Yeah, look at your part in it. Looking at your part in... Well, why have we drawn it to us? What is it that we've drawn that situation to us for? Right, it's to learn. And if we don't learn, we just keep getting the same... Same thing keeps coming, that's right. Until we... we and sometimes it takes many lifetimes. Until we've well, learned our lesson. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> if we learn to control our feelings by making them an asset, not a liability... Well, you don't want to control them. You want to learn how to deal with them. If we learn to acknowledge and accept our feelings by making them an asset, not a liability, can we really have an effect on our future? Well... By making your emotions and feelings an asset, not a liability, we change what we attract to us. We literally put a space between stimulus and response. And as Victor Hugh Frankel said, in our response lies our growth and our happiness. When we know our emotions and feelings better, we can put a space between acting out as we always did, and learn not to be so attached to the emotional feeling, not become so reactive. So we let our emotions fuel you, not rule you. Right, there's that famous R word, reactive. Right, reactive. Uh, what's the other R word? Is um, Responsive. Responsive, rather than reactive. Being so. reactive, we're coming from our wounded inner child. Being responsive, we're coming from our adult. Adult child. Being reactive is being triggered. Yeah. Being being responsive is being aware mm. of your past hurts and feelings. Yeah. So I say we become the watcher watching ourselves. Watching, watching ourselves. If we do keep working on this, I just feel sometimes, you know, when you look at things happening in the world, you. It's easy to fall into, oh my, 
God, you know. But if we are always centered and aware and focused We're on seeing... We're not so attached to all the awful things. <laughs> so but. will we attract a happy future, even though the news tells us very differently? Absolutely. Mm. You attract better and more positive things to you. I mean, you know that in what's happening in your life. Well, same for me, regardless. Regardless of you know. outside circumstances and feelings, I now remain... Sentient. I mean, it's so easy in these times at the moment to be so overwhelmed and affected by this. And, you know, there's been a lot of suicides at this time. Has there? Well, I want to put my focus on good and lovely things, not negative or... Um, yeah, what, what purpose... aching things. Yeah, what purpose does it serve mm. to focus on this? Right. Um, well, do we just turn off the news or what? Or, I mean, or we see it and then we don't come don't from a react... Don't get so attached to it. ...and react, reactive. Mm. I remember Eckhart Tolle once said that we're in a time where things are both getting better and getting worse at the same time. Yeah. Like this paradigm shift and is it we just choose the side we want to be on basically absolutely or? you make a choice by the way you think and feel how do we we've been talking about it, but being and not being affected by well it doesn't mean you're not going to be affected you're choosing not to get too attached to that thing i mean if you're feeling hurt you're feeling hurt but you could feel hurt for days and days or or learn to detach more from it by where you're choosing to put your thought and feeling and not being not being attached I'm not, I didn't I'm not saying it's easy that's definitely but not practice, easy practice the more you do it the easier it becomes thank you again for such an enlightening discussion Claire that's my pleasure, Tommaso. <laughs> With many years' experience behind her, she's had a profound influence in many people's life and a profound influence on my life. As it, you have with your wonderful, beautiful piano playing. Oh, thanks. Well, that's all from your encouragement, really. If you would like to make a personal appointment with Claire to further discuss, please click on the link below. She works face-to-face, -face, online, and also by phone, too. Or in the park. <laughs> or in the park. Oh, do you? I did not know that. No. <laughs> She'll see you in the park later. <laughs>